Okay. <clears throat> I, hi, everyone. I'm going to present a strategic project in ITC, at ITC uh, for publication uh, flagship data sets. And uh, this project is in line with ITC's open science plan and focuses on uh, how to uh, publish data in a fully transparent way so that people can easily understand data and start using data. Um, one of the long-term goals of ITC is to become uh, actually known as important geospatial data sets provider and to increase its uh, global visibility. Uh, however, besides all the efforts that have been made so far and support that uh, people got to publish their data, researcher still hesitate to publish their data because of lack of time or they don't know how to organize their data in a useful way or uh, some, some of them, they are worried about their position in a competitive environment. They are not sure about copyright issues, the license they have to, to use, or they have the right to share data or not. Sometimes their data contains sensitive data, but on the other hand, those data that have already been published, uh, they, are, they are dumped and abandoned in the uh, data repositories because it's difficult for end users to understand data, and I would say it's the, that the data are not really usable. And uh, in this project, we, fo we focus how what we can do to increase uh, reusability of the data. Uh, what we uh, actually propose in this project is to develop a mechanism that optimizes the reuse of uh, the data and to make data more understandable and reusable for the users. And by implementing this, uh, this mechanism on uh, a few sample flagship data sets in ITC, uh, increase actually the, uh, uh, I would say, to provide a strong incentive for researchers. When they see in practice the benefit of the uh, data publication, they get more uh, 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 in, in incentive to start publishing their data. In this presentation, first I uh, will explain what I mean by a flagship data sets. And then I introduce um, briefly the base model for data publication that people use to publish their data. And then I present my uh, ideas to facilitate reuse of data. And then I will show you one uh, sample flagship data at ITC. Uh, when I started this project, we focused on uh, implementing our proposed uh, publication mechanism on some flagship data sets. Uh, so I uh, defined some criteria to um, uh, uh, select flagship data set at ITC uh, in a way that if a data set meets one or more of these criteria, I selected them. And those are uh, data sets that are of high quality. This quality can, should be actually reported as a part of metadata or in a standalone uh, report. Those data that are important and has a considerable potential to support different applications and projects in different domains. Sometimes a data set is not actually of high quality, but they are novel and unique. And uh, those data sets that have been used uh, in ITC or outside, uh, those that actually have uh, high data impact. Of course, we consider those data sets that have already published a data paper in the data journal as a flagship data set because they have proved the quality of data set, the data set by publishing a data paper. And uh, data sets that are time relevant uh, should be maintained. And data producers should consider that a, a, a publication of a flagship data set should be under a fully open license. Based on this criteria, I selected uh, three data sets so far at ITC. The first one is travel times to cities and ports in year 2015, that in this presentation I will show you uh, my ideas for this uh, sample. I chose this uh, data set. It's a, it's a global travel time accessibility indicators for year 2015. I chose it because it has already published a data paper. It has open file format. It is published under open license. It has the potential to support other researchers. And, um, uh, and it's, it's unique in resolution and uh, geographic coverage. 
Here you can see the base model for publishing a data that now, uh, actually currently researchers do all these steps by getting support uh, from data stewards. They prepare their data in an open file format and then they make sure there is no legal or ethical issues in their data. They document their data and prepare metadata and readme file. And then by getting support from data store, they choose a data repository and define access level and license for their data. And finally, they publish their data and get a DOI. But what I suggest to add to these steps to facilitate reuse of data is, first of all, for our data sets that are geographic data sets, we should use geographic metadata standard. Uh, then the second idea is to integrate data with explorative analysis. And then we, pub uh, we promote publishing a data paper and finally, uh, at ITC website, uh, we, use, uh, we use actually ITC website as a central entry um, to uh, advertise published data sets. The first idea is that um, one of the most important aspects of FAIR principle is to provide high quality metadata because it actually improves the discoverability, accessibility, and usability of the data. But unfortunately, general purpose data repositories, they don't provide proper spatial metadata. They only provide some basic met uh, metadata elements that doesn't support geographic met uh, data sets. ISO 19115, FGDC, and INSPIRE uh, are uh, uh, one of the mo uh, most important international metadata standards that are commonly used for geospatial data. Uh, FGTC recently recommended uh, ISO 19115 and INSPIRE uh, actually uh, extracted core elements of uh, ISO 19115 that is based on infrastructure for spatial information in the European Union. And in this project, we recommend INSPIRE metadata. Uh, here you can see one of the most actually important difference between a, um, a general metadata and a geographic uh, metadata that they co uh, contain geographic locations uh, such as a geographic bounding box, coordinates reference system, spatial representation type, spatial resolution. These are information, important information for our data sets that are missed in uh, general purpose uh, repositories, data repositories. The second idea is to encapsulate the data in an interactive environment, and by this I mean a data producer should uh, actually provide a, a computational environment, such as a Jupyter Notebook. And I think all of you know that Jupyter Notebook is a web application that provides you document um, uh, uh, your uh, code uh, with, uh, with the actually uh, format text and uh, the visualization, the outputs uh, in one document. And by, uh, by using some open source tools and services, you can build and share this Jupyter Notebook uh, so that uh, users uh, don't need to install any software or tool in their uh, own computer. They just need uh, uh, internet access and a browser to open the, uh, your Jupyter Notebook and start exploring data. Uh, data producers should actually prepare some analysis that they think is useful for data users in Jupyter Notebook and uh, publish their Jupyter Notebook with their data. Uh, for example, Binder is one of those open source tools that support uh, building and sharing uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, if, you, if, if, if data producer uh, publish their Jupyter Notebook in, for example, in GitHub and provide the DOI of their uh, GitHub uh, in Binder, Binder give a reusable link that you can share it with your data. Then when people find your data, uh, by uh, opening this link, they can start exploring your data in a Jupyter Notebook that you have provided. And then they, if they find your data set interested for their domain, they can download it. Or it's useful for big uh, data sets that you can create, uh, actually, you can provide this opportunity for users to uh, just extract a subset of your data sets or sometimes they don't, know, they don't want the data, but they need some information from your data. Uh, so I, I would say in brief, they can start exploring your data in this environment and get information, and if, if they find it interested, they can download it. What we do in this project, we provide some guidelines how to publish data that is explorative, and we actually uh, develop some t uh, templates for Jupyter Notebooks, and we suggest best repositories and services like Binder that support this initiative. The third idea is to promote publishing data paper. 
to make your data more reliable and understandable. By doing this, first of all, you get more citations because you provide a citable journal publication and you actually um, uh, present your data in a formatted text uh, so it will be more understandable for data users. You bring the existence of your data into, uh, into existence and uh, you actually increase the visibility of your data. And by getting feedback from peer review, peer review uh, if there is any error in your data or your uh, data documentation, you, will Im you, you, you are able to uh, improve your data sets. For example, in our domain, Air System Science Data is an international uh, journal uh, to publish research data sets. Uh, if you publish a data paper in this journal, you actually prove that uh, your data set is a, a reliable resource because they not only, in the quality assessment, they not only check the manuscript and the paper that you have prepared, but they also check the data sets you have published in, your, in, the, in the repository. They check the quality of your data, if it's useful or not, if it's complete and accessible, if it's significant or, do, or unique. Uh, so you prove that your data set is a reliable resource. In brief, if I uh, want uh, to mention the benefits you get by publishing um, geographic metadata standard, uh, a Jupyter notebook with your data that enable uh, users exploring your data, and the data paper, you get more a citation, you actually add value and may catch errors in your data or documentation, and users can readily uh, discover, understand, and use your data. The, f uh, the first data sets we chose in uh, ITC, as I mentioned, was travel time to cities and ports. Uh, we provide uh, such an interface in ITC website, it's not live yet. It, it will be in the near future, uh, to show uh, what uh, a flagship data publication looks like. Under Overview tab, uh, we present a short description of um, uh, the data set and how you can cite it. Under Documentation tab, uh, we provide the DOI, the link for the data paper uh, that has been published for these data sets. Uh, under Metadata tab, um, we um, uh, actually implement uh, uh, Inspire standard, uh, and we actually provided a guideline to implementing because it's not easy. Usually, metadata standards contains 100 pages, and it's difficult to implement it. Uh, so it was important to, pro uh, to uh, provide a guidelines for it. Under uh, data is ready to use is the reusable link that um, uh, Binder provided uh, to access uh, the Jupyter notebook to uh, exploring the data, for example, for these data sets, if you click on this link, a Jupyter notebook will be opened, and then uh, people can start using this data, exploring it, creating a subset, and do some basic analysis that a uh, data producer find them useful for the users. And uh, under um, download, uh, the DOI for the data sets and how to cite the data, and under data impact, uh, we list uh, works that cite these data sets. This, this part should be active and we will work on it so that we don't need to update it manually. If you have any questions or ideas on time. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very much, Mosume, for this uh, very nice presentation. So uh, do we have any questions for Mosume about uh, Open Data Initiative? Maybe I, I, I can start with one, one question. Okay, you, you mentioned this is partly linked to, to, to a project, so, uh, right? So this is a kind of prototype work for, for ITC. Uh, what, what's the, um, uh, Karin also talked uh, about our open science vision and a uh, project related to it. How do you see uh, the future of, of, of this initiative? And uh, considering that, in fact, at ITC, uh, each year we have many graduates, master, PhD uh, students. How do you think that their work uh, can be converted in, in this kind of uh, data publications or the uh, data? At, at, at the beginning of this project, we focused on, only on flagship data set and we still focus on those data. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that in near future, every researchers and uh, students, they can follow these steps for their own data sets. I mean, it, it's, it's not needed to be flagship data sets, 
For other data sets, it can be applicable. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do I see the future? It depends on the actually promoting the culture of open science and open data. Uh, but uh, we focus on providing guidelines to actually uh, decrease the load on the researchers and to make it more easy for them. And I hope you will be. <laughs> okay. thank, thank you very much. Yes. So um, in our summer school, we had a whole session on GeoNode. And it's uh, like a platform for to solve lots of these issues. So you... Basically, you upload the data documentation, and and then it becomes uh, you get a, like a um, interface to open the data, visualize, zoom in, and put new layers and things. Is uh, ITC uh, supporting GeoNode, or is the is that maybe in a focus? You, 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 as long as I know, no, that's, yes. sorry. As long as I know. Okay, but what's uh, what's the publishing platform at ITC for the geodata, not just publication, but? Uh, now the policy at ITC is that the people use uh, general purpose uh, data repositories. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, thank you. But that's why we try to add actually these ideas to make it more uh, related to geospatial data. So the geonode will help? Most of the things you ask for, you know, have it. Like a DOI and things like that you have to do. But, for example, you can generate metadata, geographical metadata. People can uh, make different visualizations. They can share it. You know, they can download the data in different formats. They can uh, use a WMS, you know. So it's all out of box, you know. That's, that's what open source has so far, cutting edge for publishing geodata. And uh, I think Monica uses it for their project. Uh, you saw GeoNode. So, sorry? No, no, but if you make DOI on the node or somewhere, you know, you just mm -hmm. copy it. So, but that, that will solve most of, I think, what I saw in your, mm -hmm. right? So. Actually, GeoNode is a, like a content management system for geospatial data. So, uh, yeah, and it's covered, uh, I think, in courses and capacity development activities of ITC. So, in fact, we are building a, a GeoNode-based uh, systems for, for different countries, for different initiatives. And it was a stuck, the software was a bit stuck. Yeah. They almost dropped it, I don't know, and now it's a, a live back and they have a new version. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. You can see a demo that the guy came to our summer school and Give a whole demo so you can see the whole new functionality. Yeah. Um, actually, um, Alice, our um, data steward, faculty data steward, he, here, and maybe she can talk about the current practice with, in, in terms of uh, the, the, the data set publications. Do you want to say something about that, Alice? Maybe Dance Easy or other things that the PhD? Yeah. Um, actually, the current practice is what uh, Masumo uh, described. Um, yeah, we, the police of ITC um, was to advise our researchers to use dance, but also we have seen that um, 40U research data uh, repository is providing some uh, nice features that uh, our researchers need. So it's flexible uh, between 40U and the um, dance. Um, so Currently, we, we recommend them to use this because it's what UT consider also as a trusted repository. Um, uh, another thing is that we also see others using Zenodo, especially when they have a data set for which they, like one data set has different versions. So uh, Zenodo is providing that uh, option to uh, um, archive or publish uh, uh, the different uh, versions easily compared to, 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 to the other two repositories. So it's flexible. So we are still making it flexible uh, for the three uh, repositories. So that is the current practice. Um, but um, like, um, like uh, uh, Masumo mentioned, um, these are like uh, repositories which provide uh, generic metadata uh, we are we are in touch with uh, the, the the people in those um, organizations to um, 
communicate with them to tell them the need of our, our faculty uh, regarding special data. That's what I can say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Elise. And thank you very much also, Mosime, for, for, for the presentation.